Reflective Functioning and Secure Attachment by Dr. Gina Wong. Hi, everybody. I want to talk about reflective practice and some of my work and interest in the area of attachment. So as you all probably know, there's different attachment styles and I will come around to how this um, ties in with reflective practice. Um, so attachment, you know, parent-child attachment relationships, we have secure attachments, insecure attachments, and disorganized attachments. <clears throat> and then there's kind of the two categories of the insecure. So there's, um, you know, the anxious and then the avoidant insecure. Anyways, that's not what this um, video is about, but just to give you some of that background. And essentially, the secure-based attachment is what um, children feel safe within and how we ourselves in growing up feel safe um, in secure relationships kind of bodes the best for healthy um, development all around. So one of the interesting things that they find about um, individuals who have secure attachment is their ability for reflectiveness. And it's specifically called in parent-child mentalization. And another word for mentalization is reflective functioning. There's quite a bit of literature and research around reflective functioning. And what it is, it's the cognitive capacity to be able to sit outside of our own thoughts and feelings and go into the thoughts and feelings or mental states of another. So when we're able to do that, um, and it is a reflective process practice to have this reflective functioning or mentalizing ability, you know, when we're feeling a certain way, to kind of park that and put it aside and wait a minute, what's going on for this individual in front of me? What do they need right now? Or just to understand why their presentation is the way that it is. And actually what the research is now showing is that therapists with high RF, reflective functioning, have been found to be more satisfied in the profession and what they do as a counselor, um, greater well-being and enjoyment of the work in their role with clients. Um, so that ability, in fact, enriches the experience for the psychologist in what they do. And additionally, <clears throat> excuse me, additionally, clients benefit greatly with the therapist who can um, be present for what's happening for the client in spite of or with what's going on with them. So that, you know, it gives pause, I think, you know, because all of us training to be counselors have that ability to, you know, have what's going on in our minds and in our bodies, being present, and engaging with the client, we all are developing this and have it to a large degree because you're in this program, but there is this level of being able to be attuned and connect that mental state and to respond to it that I think is really important and very critical. And it takes the reflective self to be able to notice that. And when we shift out of it, you know, my sort of the thing about disclosure, am I disclosing something because I need to and I want to? There's something about me, maybe my ego. Or am I disclosing because this is something that's valuable for the client? And so right there, there is that reflective functioning um, task to think through what it is I'm going to say and where is it coming from? So when we can build and work towards our clients having a secure base relationship with us, it is an improved um, quality of relationship in general. And then as well, uh, increases our own enjoyment uh, of being in this profession. So I wanted to share with you um, kind of an example that I recently experienced that I found to be quite interesting. So working with a client of mine, 
who after a few sessions, I received an email from this individual and they said <clears throat> basically all the things we kind of uh, wish we never hear is, you know, therapy is not going in any way that I had hoped. This is not working. Um, you are going off on tangents and we're talking about things that aren't even relevant. I don't know why I'm not getting anything out of this. Um, you know, if, if we continue to work together, I'm going to have to tell you, and, you know, where we need to go and get a schedule and, you know, map of where I want to go. You know, a lot of sort of critical negative things about me. And as I was reading it, I could feel that self in me um, getting frustrated and saying, well, but, you know, and putting it back to this individual and feeling, yeah, just criticized and, you know, fine, you know, let me refer you kind of, you know, were the thoughts that I had. And I sat with that for a little bit. And then I started thinking about the client's issues. And I started to think about how and what I learned through the circle of security and about attachment, that children will act up, they'll have tantrums and they'll sort of be terrible, not because they're terrible, but often because there's a need that's not being met and they don't know how to express it. We kind of use this analogy in circle of security of like the fire, um, you know, the, the smoke detector in the house. And, you know, all of a sudden it goes off and it's loud and it's blaring sort of like the child acting out. And often what we do or what we want to do is we want to take a fire extinguisher. We want to aim it at the smoke detector and try to get it to stop the behavior. So, you know, in that way, behavior management, I could have very well said, you know, you're being terrible or, you know, here you go. Here's different referrals. Good luck. Um, but when a child is acting up, when they're the smoke detector going off, what's often the case is we need to walk down to try to find what's on fire, what's going on here. And, you know, we go down the hallway and lo and behold, in the living room, the couch is on fire. And, you know, that's getting at what's really going on for this child. Are they not feeling connected? Are they, you know, what is it that they're really needing in that moment? And so taking that step back to think about what's going on right in front of me, this client really criticizing me and telling me how I'm not very good at my job. What's going on underneath that? And when I could step, when I could step into that, I recognized that the struggle that she was having with her child, her child was acting out significantly and this parent wasn't able to contain that or know what to do with. And here, here this client was acting up with me. And so in my response to the client, I offered this as a perspective and said, I'm not giving up on you. I hear you. I understand that may have come out of a frustration with where you're at more than it being about me. And, you know, I, I kind of spoke in that way, like I would if I was holding space for anyone who was having a lot of big feelings. I would just say that's really hard. It must feel awful to not feel like you're getting somewhere with therapy. That must be scary. You know, I, I can understand that. I also understand that it's natural to kind of want to, you know, <clears throat> project that outward. And I said, I will continue to be here. <clears throat> and we can certainly talk about the direction of therapy and all of that. Um, but, you know, if this is something you would like to continue with me, I'm I'm here. I'm available and I'm happy to continue. And her email back to me was that I hit the nail on the head. 
it was exactly what was happening. And she was so grateful that I was able to see that and stay with her and be connected with her and hold the space, even though she was rattling inside, um, much like what we would do as a parent. Now, I'm not in any way saying we treat our clients as children, but what I am saying is that when our attachment systems are activated, whatever age we're at, when you have someone who can hold that and be within that and not judge kind of some of the behavior of acting out, that they begin to feel safe. And there is probably nothing I can articulate to the client that would that would reflect the feeling of what that was like for her to feel safe in that um, interaction with me, that she could turn around and do that for her child. That kind of mirroring the felt sense of someone being able to hold space when we're wigging out with our emotions allows us to be able to do that for another. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice seems to be going. So I, I hope that makes sense to you. It was really interesting for me to see how I was able to show up and see those initial reactions, which I think is pretty normal, um, and what it takes to kind of hold on to myself and stay with being kind of the big, bigger, wiser, stronger, it's okay. I. I see what's happening here.